Welcome to SQL Server Analysis Services 117 Drill Through Actions. This is a really a, kind of a continuation of the 116 video. If you're not familiar with actions and you haven't seen 116, please watch it. It's only about 10 minutes long and it is an introduction to actions in general. So now I'm going to dive into the different types of actions a little bit deeper in separate videos and this is the one on drill through actions. So I'll keep this brief, just one slide, and then we'll jump right into the demo. This, uh, the drill through action just invokes an MDX drill through statement. And what a drill through does is go and pull the base data that makes up a particular number. So let's say that you're looking at data and you get down to, say, an individual customer on, an, on a single day and you see that they spent $500. Well, was that $500 spent? in one order or in multiple orders. You can't really tell just by looking at the data. You might have an order count metric, but if you use drill through, it will actually go and pull the base data that makes that up, provided you have stored that in the cube. And I'll explain that a little bit when I get into the demonstration here in a second. So it's very important that you store the necessary level of detail in the cube, even if you don't actually go to that level of granularity normally when someone is doing their analysis. One of the catches on a drill through is that it can only be done on a single cell. Now, it can be done on multiple cells, but each one has to be done individually. You can't choose two cells and try to do a drill through on it. You have to do a drill through on one and then come back and do a drill through on the other. You also can't drill through on any kind of calculated member. So if you create a calculated measure and try to drill through on it, it's simply not going to work. Uh, there are some alternatives out there that people suggest for doing that. And I think one of the things you'll see is that there are some restrictions on drill through that sometimes lead people to substitute a reporting action for it so that they have more control. But you'll see those as I get into the demonstration. So let's take a look at actually creating a drill through action and talk about some of the pros and cons of it. So here I am in BI Dev Studio and I have built a simple sales cube. It is based, of course, on AdventureWorks, but I've simply cut out uh, a number of the measure groups and dimensions so that really all I'm working with here are two measure groups, the internet sales and the reseller sales, and uh, then I have product customer, the dates, and reseller, and I added in one other, the internet sales order details. I haven't really talked about that in previous videos, but I, I want to explain a little bit about it. But, but before I go further, let's take a look at the fact tables. And one of the things that I want to show you is that notice I have the internet sales facts, for example. And if I zoom in on this, you'll notice that the key for this is actually a compound primary key. It's not a typical star schema type key where that is the concatenation of all the dimension keys. Here, there's actually a sales order number and a sales order line number, and those act as the primary key. Well, you don't typically do analysis by the sales order number. In addition, there are some other columns in here, such as the carrier tracking number. You don't typically say, well, show me sales by a carrier tracking number. That's just a shipment. You don't really care. It just matches an order. So some of these columns are not really measures. Well, they're not measures, and they're not really separate dimensions. They are one-to-one -one with an order, or in this case, uh, an order line number. So those are sometimes what are called degenerate dimensions, or in the Microsoft world, fact dimensions. And uh, a big reason for this is sometimes you don't want to do analysis by them necessarily, but you do want them in a drill-through report. So if you were looking at the orders that actually made up some number you were interested in, you might want to see the sales order number for that, uh, the shipper number, and so forth. So those fact dimensions are often used to support drill through, and you will see that coming up in just a moment. What has happened to enable this is, notice of course this is the internet sales fact group, and there is a dimension here called the internet sales order details. And if you take a look at that dimension, then you 
notice that it is the internet sales fact table. So all they've done is add the fact table into a dimension and they've brought over in this case the sales order number and the uh, sales order line number. So they've just brought those over and said this is uh, the dimension. Then in the cube itself that is joined, notice the extra icon up here okay, telling us that this is a fact relationship and if I go into this it simply says, you know, rather than a regular relationship or reference from any to many, it's just a fact relationship. It tells us what the granularity attribute is and then the dimension table and measure group table are the same. So that's, that's really all this is. And again, I could do analysis by this. I could go into the browser and I could pull up, let's say, the internet sales amount and say, okay, great, let's analyze by the internet sales order. This is going to take a while to load because it's not one to one, uh, but it's close. I mean, some some orders have multiple line numbers, but it, it's typically just not something that you would analyze by. And as you can see, it's going to take a while. And there are the results. Now, you didn't come here to learn about fact dimensions. You came here to learn about drill through actions. So let's take a look at the actions. Notice here I've gone to the action tab and I don't have any actions listed. And so up here I have my three different types of actions and this one happens to be a drill through. Now, in Analysis Services 2000, drill through actions truly drilled through back to the relational source data. They would actually create a SQL query in most cases and query the relational data. That does not happen anymore. You are still, you are always in the cube and of course, if it's stored in a rollout format, it might be a relational table, but it's all analysis services controlling it. And so that's why it's important if I want information such as the sales order number and sales order line number, I need that in my fact table. And even if I don't normally analyze by it and see it in the cube, uh, it's something that I need to have access to. So let's name this uh, Internet Sales Details. And with this, remember that any action has to have some kind of target. And here, since it's a drill through action, it's a measure group member, uh, one or more. And notice that it's all the measure groups or just uh, a single one. Well, this says internet sales details, so I only want internet sales facts. Now, this is the members now in internet sales facts. So any measure in there is going to be part uh, or is going gonna, is gonna to have this drill through action tied to it. Now if there were actions or if there were measures that I didn't want I could use this condition to block them out. I could simply write an MDX statement that said something like you know while it's not this particular measure so uh, I could exclude certain measures from that list if I wanted. I'm not going to worry about that I'm just going to leave it as it is. The next thing is to choose the columns from the various dimensions. And yes, when I click in here, measures is one of the dimensions that shows up. So with the measures, since this can be, since this action can be run on any of the measures, I'll go ahead and select all three, um, the internet order quantity, sales amount, or the sales fact count. And I'll say OK. And then, I'll say, okay, what else would I want to know potentially about uh, an internet sales order? Well, let's skip the sales order details for a moment. So product, I might be interested in the actual product that they ordered. And let's say I want to know the color of whatever it was that they ordered as well. I'll keep this fairly simple. I might want to know who the customer is that actually placed the order. So I could come in and I could say the order and let's just pull out their, uh, let's see, their uh, country, state, city, and postal code, and uh, their gender. We'll just throw that in there. So I now know something about the product and the customer. I might want to know the order date. I'll just go ahead and, and grab that. And uh, for that, I'll choose the... actual uh, 
date, which I skipped here, it's the second one. And now finally, again, I, at this point, I could go ahead and run this and get this, this level of detail. But again, this is where I'm going to use that sales order detail to get information that I don't normally see in the cube. It's not a measure. It's not really dimensional. I'm kind of treating it like that. So let's see what the sales order number is for this customer. And again, I could have added some other things like their sh uh, ship, shipping number and, and some other things. But we'll just add the sales order number. Uh, we'll go ahead and add the sales order line number as well. Okay, so this is what I'm going to see in the drill through. When I run this, these are the columns. Now, there are some additional properties down here. Let's talk about those. Default here is mostly for backwards compatibility. There, basically, when you issue a drill through statement, if there's a returns clause, it runs through until it finds something that has data in the first one. If it's the default, then that's what it returns. Uh, not terribly important that you set that here. What is important that you set in most cases is the maximum rows. If a user, and they're really good at this, uh, if they're looking at a very high level and they choose the drill through action, it could potentially return billions of records. They could be sitting there forever. Now most client tools automatically restrict and that's a setting that you can place in there. But here, just for an example, uh, I'll set this to 500. So that's the maximum number of rows that I'll return here. The invocation, you might say, oh, batch interactive on open. So every time I open the cube, it could run this. Again, this is something for client tools to honor. It is not going to change the behavior of this action in the cube itself. The application, this is if you write, are writing, say, a custom application, then uh, you can define what application should run this action. And again, nothing that we'll, we'll be doing here. The description is just an optional description of what the action does. And then if you want, you can change the caption as it will appear in the client tool. Now, if I don't set this, it will simply be the name of the action itself, Internet Sales Detail. Here I could change this to, for example, drill through to Internet Sales details. So I'll make it long so it's really obvious when it pops up. The last thing here is caption is MDX. Uh, obviously that is false here and that will be false most of the time for a drill through. It really doesn't make sense but you'll see that in action on some of the other actions later. So I've defined this action so let me go ahead and deploy this. So once the deploy is complete I'll go to the browser and I'll reconnect and wait for this to run again. I should have cleared it first. And it has finished running, so let me go ahead and clear this. So remember that the action has been added to all of the members of the Internet Sales Fact Measure Group. So it doesn't really matter which one I bring over. I can bring over, for example, uh, the, the sales amount and if I right click on it you'll notice here it is drill through to internet sales details so this is that new action now I'm not going to click it at this high level even though I restricted it to 500 records I'm going to grab the product categories hierarchy and let me take the in this case the order date and I'll take the calendar hierarchy here and I'll move it up and just restrict it to a short period of time. Let's say a particular month in the year 2003. Let's do January of 2003. And notice the only thing I sold that month were bikes. And if I expand this, you'll see mountain bikes. And I can go down and I sold $22,785.62 worth of Mountain 200 Silver 42 inch. Okay, well how many orders was that? I could add an order count uh, potentially, but I just want to see the orders that make up that number. So I can right click and say show me the internet sales details for that particular number. Here they come and you'll notice first of all the column headers here are not particularly friendly. This is the order quantity, the sales amount, so that's the price of that bike. This one is the 
uh, third measure here, the internet sales fact count. And then here's who the customer was that bought it and some information about them, their, their country, their state province, their city, the zip code or postal code. Here's their gender, which was added in. Here's the date in which they ordered it. So again, just one month and you can see that. And then here are the sales order number and the sales order line number. So fairly boring there, all ones. But that is now the detailed information. So I can immediately see what that data is. Now, notice this sample viewer restricts it to the first thousand records regardless. So that's all that you can see here. A couple of things to point out. One thing is people will often look at this and say, those headers, the, the column names are fairly ugly. And yes, that's true. Uh, is there a way to rename those? No. People often look at that and say, well, I should just be able to add an as clause like I do in SQL. That would be great, but uh, it is not functionality that is there. You'll notice later when I get into the, uh, the dimensions, there's a dollar sign in front of the dimension names. So, for example, customer.postalcode, there's a dollar sign. And, and again, that's just an artifact of how the drill through works. And there's really no good way around that. Now, let's take a look at what this action would look like in another tool, in this case, Excel. So here I am in Excel, and I'll very quickly connect to the data. And I'll go to Analysis Services, enter in the server name, use my Windows credentials, And you'll notice here, of course, I have the Adventure Works, and I've added this new cube called Simple Sales. That's really what I'm after. So let's go ahead, and I'm not worried about the name of it. Let's put it in here, and this is just the way it happens to look in Excel. I'll add Internet Sales uh, or Internet Order Quantity. I'll go ahead and add the sales amount. And again, if I right-click here, then in Excel, it's under Additional Actions. There is the Drill Through action. So I could go ahead and run this, and notice it pops up in a new uh, a new spreadsheet and says it is retrieving data and it should be restricted to at most 500 records because that's what I set on that particular action so again you see this is how it comes back in Excel I have the same column names notice I can sort by these it does in fact uh, make it a, a data table when it brings them back and if I scroll down then sure enough there it is restricted to 500 you might say, no, it's 503, but it actually started the data there. So uh, that is an example of a drill-through action and how that works. The, the real thing to remember is that if you have something that wouldn't normally be part of the cube that you'd use for analysis, let's say something like a sales order number or potentially something like a carrier tracking number or the customer PO number, but you need it, then make it a fact dimension. In other words, make a dimension of the fact table, bring those over, and then in your cube you will relate it back to the fact table for the measure group as a fact dimension, and then you'll be able to pull it up in your drill through.